Utah State trip last year in terms of travel, you know, what that's like, what you guys kind of kind of expect this week? Um, it's a long trip. That's the thing one, it's a long trip. And we kind of have to try to go to sleep at the like East Coast time versus the West Coast time. Um, but besides that, football's football, so nothing really. Do you like that Kurt likes to keep very little time on, on those road games? Like he wants you there at the last second? Or would you uh, have a little more time to acclimate? I've never experienced anything different, so I couldn't really tell you, but hey, it is what it is. How much are, are you excited are you guys about this opportunity, playing UCLA starting the Big Ten? Oh, very excited. I think this is a game where we kind of go out there and prove to everybody that this is real. I feel like we you know, had two warm-up games and people still might be a little bit skeptical. And I think going in here, doing what we need to do against UCLA can start this this change that we're looking for. Does it bother you at all that people are kind of been like, okay, well, 2-0, but you know, they're beating the two teams that it should be. Does that enter your mind at all in terms of uh, you know wanting to prove anything? Not at all. Uh, that's kind of just clutter. I just think, I mean, based off what, what this team did last year, I, I understand it. We just got to go out there and prove it to them on Saturday. That's it. Coach Lignetti kind of talked about the mindset of just, it's any other game out there in the past, in Pasadena and the Rose Bowl. How have you seen the team buy into that? Oh, yeah. We're definitely buying into that. The whole, like, we're going to be an L.A. thing, UCLA thing, playing the Rose Bowl. It is cool. It is a great experience. But at the end of the day, it's, football is football. And once the pads is on, once the ball is kicked, it's it's football. It doesn't matter what stadium we're in. Do you guys allow yourself any moment prior to kickoff to soak it in, or is it just once you get to the stadium, it's game time? It's game time. Is it easier to? I'm sorry. Is it, is it easier to have that mentality as a player than? Because fans think like that. They're like, "Oh, cool, it's going to the Rose Bowl." Mm-hmm. Is it easier than it would seem to fans to kind of block all that out? Yeah, I I think it's a lot easier. Um, I mean, depending on I guess the person, but I think for the most part, again, football is football. And as long as you keep that your priority, then you'll be able to switch your mindset to that. I want to say that Marcus mentioned that this summer there's like you, him, Linnell, a few others were just kind of hanging out here and they kind of would provide you with a few things and you'd provide them with a few things. What's kind of the value in that for you? Um, especially me not being in this conference, uh, them giving me, you know, the scouting reports and what type of uh, alignment I'll be facing this year, you know, probably be a little bit more physical, more run heavy. Uh, that kind of aided into what drills, what techniques I needed to work on over the summer. And then my drills and techniques, I was able to provide to them uh, for them to get better. From an off-field relationship standpoint, how important was it? Very important, especially me coming in as a transfer, uh, kind of trying to build that chemistry, uh, especially as a D-lineman. Once the D-line has chemistry, we play so fast. So that was kind of a jump start to that. And these first two games, we're still working the chemistry. And I know eventually it's really going to click and this thing's going to when you say play fast, is that more with like a stunt, or how does that kind of show up? Yeah, kind of, kind of like stunts. Maybe Marcus might get up the field real fast, and I see it, and I'll just wrap it, or I just know based off this look, this set, I know, have an idea what type of move he's gonna hit, and I can base my moves based off of that. Uh, a lot has been spoken about all the James Madison guys coming and kind of instituting that institutional knowledge. You guys are Coach Signetti. Mm-hmm. From your teammates that are playing under him for the first time, how? much do you think they've caught up to where you kind of need them to be and how much does it now kind of feel like it's one team instead of 13 guys trying to show the other guys how to do that? Uh, at this point it feels like one team for sure. I think everyone's bought into it. All the guys that are playing they've all bought into it. I think they even from the jump I know a lot of the guys that didn't want to be a product a part of this change all transferred or did whatever they needed to do and all the guys that stayed was kind of committed to changing this program. So I think by now, we, we have this team set. I know there's going to be a lot of bumps in the road, just like any team, any season. Uh, but eventually, the, it's going to be completely one team. But right now, I think we're all together. I'm set. You've rotated a lot on the inside, um, more so than you know, last year. And, and did you kind of know that was coming? On the inside, meaning? Like inside <laughs> tackle, like a tackle kind of spot? No, I was about the same as last year. Yeah. Uh, when we kind of go in our three, four looks, that's I'll play that uh, three tech position. And then I'll also play five, or I'll play that stud position. I'm mean, not play kind of all three positions, but it's about the same as last year. Do you like that kind of rotation? And, and what's the kind of key to making that successful to work at those other spots? Uh, I like it because it gives me different matchups. So now I'm going as a guard. Maybe it's pass rush, I get to go 
playing space against a guy that's not used to being in space, or even going inside and I'm closer to the ball. So now when I make one move, I'm right there at the ball. Versus you make a move on the edge, you still have that game to that around the game. Um, and then playing stud and playing end, they're a little bit different in terms of technique and mentality going into those positions. So it gives me an opportunity to kind of manipulate tackles a little bit differently, uh, just based off the position, not even based off skill or anything. Do you know kind of going in how many snaps you're gonna get or is it kind of based on feel for Haynes calls the game and then that's kind of how things develop? It'll be based off the way Haynes calls the game, depending on, you know, who's tired, who's not, personnel, things like that. Outside of the venue, how excited are you to play in your first conference power, power level? I'm power really excited. Uh, this is a, a really big opportunity for me, especially, you know, being a Sunbelt guy. First off, I'm the FCS guy, then Sunbelt. Uh, I just wanna, not even just me, I think everyone's kind of prove that we're supposed to be here. Uh, that's me speaking for all the other JMU guys and even the, the guys that's transferred here from ODU or whatever other schools they transferred from. Uh, I think this is a big game. You know, it's going to be on TV. It's like, it's a big opportunity. What do you see on film from them? <clears throat> I see that they run a pro style uh, type of offense. So for the most part, each formation has their plays. So schematically, they're not too difficult. But as far as the guys that they have in there, the game, they got a fast running back, a smart quarterback, some fast guys on the outside, some big old linemen. Those guys can kind of make it work. Uh, but I'm confident in my guys winning one on ones, and I'm confident in Haynes calling the right calls, uh, out coaching their offense coordinator. So uh, honestly, it's they're kind of like a faceless team. I'm not really worried about what they're doing. I'm more worried about preparing throughout the week. Did they have you watching NFL stuff with, with the enemy, or did you guys yeah. watch it? Yeah, we actually have. We have watched some of the, the Commanders film. Uh, in their cutups, since uh, UCLA only played their game against Hawaii, right. we don't have as much film, so we watched the Hawaii game and then some cutups of the Commanders. One more. Coming off the 77-3 to win, um, you know, that's a, that's a very historic win, especially offense, most points scored, most yards. But also the defense, you know, playing great, only allowing those three points. What do you think it says about this group? And then just the second game, you did something so historic. Uh, I don't want to downplay downplay that because that, that that is historic and it's something that is great that we did. But at the end of the day, that opponent wasn't you know the best opponent, so it's kind of we have to kind of wipe that out now and focus on UCLA uh, again. For, I think it's more for the fans and they get to see something, but us as players, we. That's kind of poison a little bit in the sense that we're kind of was feeding off that high and we need to lock back in going against our, our first Big Ten opponent. Great. Thanks for Kyle.